Hey y'all, it's me, Abby Artemisia, and the power is back on. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> I was just about to resign myself to eating potato chips for dinner, but also, yeah, uh, reading, which is great, and I don't get to do very often. So, anyway, here we are. <laughs> we made it. And um trying to uh, figure out how to do this whole life thing <laughs> and invite Derek Haynes. So, if we can get that all working, sorry about... Um, the crazy technical aspects here but um as soon as Derek joins us then I'll invite him in and we'll get started talking but for right now this is a brand new thing that I decided to start called plant people talks with a hashtag before it and I started it because I wanted to talk more to the folks who are on my podcast and other planty people and um yeah, I, it actually takes like a ton of work to produce a podcast, if you didn't know. And so I thought it'd be fun just to go off the cuff and go live and be spontaneous and talk about the plenty things we're doing. So if you're here and you're watching and you want to know anything plant related for me or for Derek Haynes, the crazy botanist please put them in the comments and we'll try to answer those questions. But for right now, I'll ask you a question. What is your favorite plant right now? So it looks like Derek is here. So we're going to go live. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> but yeah, please type in what your favorite plant is right now, what you're foraging what you're wild crafting, what yummy things you're making. And I don't know if you saw my live from the other day, but I made some fabulous jun and flavored it with grapefruit and peppermint. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Derek got kicked out. <laughs> oh, lordy technology. Well, it might be because my power went off. So... Um, we'll, we'll try and get him back in here. So just bear with us y'all, but please type in what your, um, it's not letting me invite people. Um, please type in what your favorite plant is right now, what you're foraging. And, uh, Derek says the app went crazy. <laughs> So here we go and we're going to try this again and hopefully Derek will be right with us. Oh, he's going to come back. I just tried to invite you again, Derek. So I was talking about some John that I made. Y'all know what John is. John is something fabulous, which is like kombucha, but it's a different um, culture. So it's kind of like the cousin of kombucha and a different culture with a scoby in there. So like the same sort of culture that you see in kombucha. And yeah, it does sound amazing. Um, but traditionally kombucha is made with black tea and sugar, whereas John is made with green tea and honey. And it also goes a little bit faster. So um, it took mine about a week with a second ferment, um, and, ah, oh, man, so a little bit of technical difficulties here, but we're going to keep trying. Maybe it's just the storm, y'all. It's a crazy time to be alive, right? Um, oh, there he is! Hello, everyone. It's <laughs> I the crazy botanist. It took me a second, but I'm here. 
We did it. Thank you so we much. Got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Yay. So, y'all, this is Derek Kane's The Crazy Botanist. Dang right. Uh, if you want to find him on Instagram, it's botanical.highlander. And what's your handle on Facebook? My handle on Facebook is The Crazy Botanist. It's three different words, but it's all one person. It's me. Sweet. Sweet. Okay. Well, you can check him out there. You can check me out, too, also at the Wander School. And if y'all didn't already see it or hear it, the latest podcast of the Wander Forge and Wildcraft podcast, which is produced by the Wander School, um, had featured Derek Haynes, the Crazy Botanist. Oh my goodness, it did! I'm so excited. <laughs> it was and we had such an awesome time talking yeah. about botany oh, yeah. and the plants impact on black people and black people's impact on the plants. Yes. So yes. If, 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 that's my jam and jam, yes. Uh, we, uh, yeah, you do need to listen to Nurturetopia. It's awesome. So go look for Wander Forge and Wildcraft on any podcast platform. Um, mm -hmm. and you'll find it or at thewanderschool.com. Just click on the podcast page yeah. and you'll find it. And we also did a little bonus interview for my patrons on Patreon about Derek's fabulous Urban Victory Garden. Yeah, we had a ball. We did have a ball. It was so much fun. So that like reconfirmed to me that I wanted to do this crazy cool thing called, um, I just skipped my mind, but uh, Plant People Talks. Sorry. Plant people okay. talk. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, so we're going to talk with plant people about plants and Ooh. chat up the plants. That's what I'm saying. I love it. I love it. So, again, thank you for having me up here. I thank you to all of you who are watching. All of you who are watching, do me a big favor. There's a paper airplane at the bottom of your screen. I want you to tap that paper airplane. And I want you to send this out to 10 people. And I want you to harass them to come up here and watch me and watch us. So, please do that there. I love it. I'm going to do it right now, too. Yeah. Well, we're right here. So, yeah, y'all, please invite people. And then and, the at the bottom of your screen, there's a box that says Q&A. And if you tap that box and you write a question, then it'll make myself and Abby more easily able to see your words on this here screen. I tell you, it works. It really does. And we'll answer or we'll try to answer <laughs> yes. whatever you ask about plants. And yeah. um, it's kind of cool, too, because... We both have a little bit different, I think, knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fun that way, too. It is. Yeah. So I'm so curious, Derek. What's your favorite plant today? So today, um, what have I that's caught my eye today? I got these, ja these not Japanese, Egyptian. I don't know where Japanese came from. Egyptian walking onions from nice. your friend. Um whose name is now escaping me. I'm feeling so bad, but it's okay. Um, this is what happens when you get old people. Your mind just goes blank. And I am starting them from seed. I'm also starting some cabbage collars that she sent me as well because she knew I was trying to grow some for myself and a friend, and she sent me a bunch of seeds. So those are, are catching my eye right now. But as you all know, I don't have any one favorite plant because I love them all. Me too. <laughs> so we got a, our first question. I'm ready. And Nurture Topia wants to know what are your favorite herbs to grow? So I know that you have quite a few grown right now, so I'm going to let you start with that one. Um, I love orange mint. Mm -hmm. And orange mint is phenomenal. It is um, wow. one of the best in the world. Um, I also love, um, 
I love any mint, really, to be honest. I'm just a mint fanatic. Um, but I really love orange mint and apple mint because they are different and unique. I What else have I grown that I've used a lot of? Um, rosemary I enjoy. And I also enjoy uh, the lavenders. So pretty much anything in that laminaceae family I am, like, vibing with. Um... I love rose hips. I don't grow them often enough. I get them from like random places and just use them. But I'm um, like my grandmother's yard. She has some roses I planted like almost 20 years ago. And wow. Actually, no, I'm miscounting. 2019, 10, over 10 years ago. There we go. And um, I love them. I love them. What about you? What's your favorite to grow? Oh, geez, there are so many. And honestly, I got my garden in super duper late this year. Um, so it's kind of just getting going because I moved again. But um, lemon balm, I mean, any of the mints are so easy to grow, right? So, and of course, we want to make sure that we contain them and probably not put them in the middle of big gardens. Probably not. But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I have like these small raised beds, so it's kind of perfect. So I decided one bed is going to be like mostly a mint bed and just put my lemon balm in there and uh, my spearmint. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I also just like as an aside with this nonprofit I'm doing that I just started, y'all. So check out the announcement on Instagram and Facebook. Um, helping make herbs accessible to communities in need. I went out to visit the Cherokee and brought some herbs and helped them in their garden. And it's so cool because it came full circle. They were like, come to our Cherokee garden, harvest as much peppermint as you want to take home. So I harvested a bunch of peppermint, which is delicious. And it's also going to go to other communities in need. So... Hmm. Yeah, it's really great. Um, and I've been playing around with um, trying to root mints from cuttings, which is usually pretty easy, except when you try it. And then <laughs> it's not always easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I think, and you might know better, but I think the trick is to make sure like you get a few nodes in there. Mm -hmm. So, like, for y'all out there who don't know what that means, it's, like, where the leaves join the stem. And in mints especially, they're more likely to root right there. So you can just cut them, um, leaving a few nodes above the cut, put it in water, and mm -hmm. often it will root on its own. So um, I've been trying to do that with some spearmint outside my door. I tried to transplant some and it wasn't as happy. So I think like rooting it, um, trying to root it in a, in a, in a vase, like might work better. Sometimes that, it does. Uh, yeah. So we'll so see. I can actually show you some I'm What's that? I can actually show you some I'm rooting. Oh, yay! Oh, that's right. I forgot that you have your little... So anyway, I have a propagation station to, to choke a horse. And right here, I am actually propagating it. It's grown root since you've last seen it. I wish I could put a light on. But um, you can actually see the little roots Ooh. coming in. And I just have nice. the water. I take change the water out every week. Um, when I empty out the water, I let it basically stay empty in this lecker for like a day or two. And then I put more water back in it. And I'm getting pretty much flowers now on, which I'm pinching off on my, um, my um, what's this thing called? Grapefruit and Thai mint. Whoa, cool. And what are those little round stone things that you have in there? Those are called leka. So leka, 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 whatever you call them, I love them. Most people like of them, but I love of them. Hey, oh, we're doing puns today, people. So these are little clay balls, and these little clay balls are the best brown balls you could ever have around you ever. Is this? There's no children up here, right? We're just gonna go ahead and jump in. So this <laughs> is the most amazing thing, and they're amazing because 
Um, and I know, Rob, everybody is going this way. I at first was skeptical because I'm an Eastern North Carolinian, and by default, I am skeptical of everything. Howsoever, I use these things, and they're, again, these little expanded clay tablets, these pellets, and you basically soak them to get them initially started. So um, I generally will start my cuttings off like um, this random philodendron pothis thing here. I'll start my cuttings off, fill this up with water in a little container here, and bang, boom, Bob's your uncle. You start to get these roots, like you can see here. Now, you also start to get algae because, again, I didn't even get out the water on this one every week like I was supposed to. However, it's amazing because, again, this is empty, but you can still see there's some type of humidity in here, and it makes it a very habitable environment for the roots to grow without the, the the issue you can sometimes get in water where you can just get this rotten as mush. So it's called LECA, L-E-C-A. And it's little expanded clay balls. I was lucky enough to buy some off of the Amazon, like $16, I think, two pounds. And then I got a 10-pound bag from a friend for free. So I'm going to do all the LECA I can. And literally, even with this here, my purple queen, and I have my phone here on the charger. I'm trying to have it on the char charger. Here we go. There we go. I have my phone here on the charger because it's like trying to die on me. This purple queen here actually started in one of these lacquer containers. And it, it, it's growing so big. And you wouldn't think that this was just a small cutting two months ago. Even less than that. And I put it under this, these lights, and it's just beautiful. So LECA is fantastic. Um, whenever you're trying to do propagations, definitely get your nodes. I do maybe like a four-inch piece minimum if I'm trying to do propagation in water or in LECA or in sphagnum moss or soil. A four-inch piece, I basically try to keep them human and happy, and especially if I'm transplanting outside because those people, I'm sure, gave you something beautiful. If I'm transplanting them, I try to keep them in a shady area because... <laughs> They're little baby, they're little children, they're little baby plants. They don't have everything the rest of these plants have yet. So that's that's how I've typically um, operated. And even when things have died, I've noticed usually the roots will kind of get started underground. And then I'll look later, I'm like, why is there bee balm growing here? Oh, that's right. I had it in the pot before it died. And now it's right. <laughs> like Jesus. Hey, Ben. Oh, ben is here, my baby pup, Ben. I'm so happy. Dude, I can't even keep up. You just crack them, right, and left. And I also started dying when you were talking about propagation because you made the most hilarious joke about the propagator. Yes, <laughs> so. Y'all wouldn't believe this, but some of this stuff just literally hits me in the moment. I record a video, and it'll just be like, say this, Derek. And I'm like, eh, okay. And then boom. We got puns coming out. And as long as I laugh, that's all that matters. That's right. And I love puns. I will laugh at any pun. And I'm also kind of the queen of the unintentional pun. So mm. it's pretty fun. That's that coming in your life, huh? Bing bong. Gotcha. Anywho. <laughs> so, party people. So we are here answering your questions, your plenty questions. You have an opportunity to talk to so many years of experience here and to hit that arrow at the bottom of your screen and to send this off to 10 people so we can get these views up. And to hit that box and ask your questions in the QA box. And that way, Maddie, Ab Madam Abby can see them and show them to the world. <laughs> that is true. It is an amazing opportunity. And... I did ask folks what is their favorite plant right now and what they are foraging and wildcrafting. And I just want to encourage you, Derek. I just saw something on your Instagram page about Wildcrafted Wednesday. And that sounds pretty freaking awesome. So I think that needs to be revived. You must have been going far back. I haven't done that in a while. So yeah, it was in your highlights. Yeah, you know what? It sure is. I forgot to take that down because I don't do that. <laughs> So, you should, though. It's awesome. My wild craft was I, I craft sodas out of yeast. That is mm -hmm. And I consider that to be a wild craft because Heck you know, yeah. so I'm like, dang it, let's do it. And yeah. uh, 
I would make sodas and make these god awful when I first started long videos, these hour long Facebook live, two hour long Facebook live. Facebook doesn't cut you off. I just want y'all to know. Facebook gives you four hours to just just, just the wow. dick on the internet. And my family, God bless them, would try to watch these videos. They'd be like, I left and came back, and left and came back, I came back, you still here, still making stuff. But now, excuse me, I'm better, but God knows it was. Um, I used to have a whole week's worth of stuff. Mushroom Crush Monday, Term Tuesday, Wildcraft Wednesday, Throwback Thursday, Flower Friday. Wow, I love it. Day, it was it was literally a week chock full of me trying to be like, pictures, everybody, let's talk. But um, I found that I think it's better when I just kind of go off my own flow and just really yeah. show all my life and what I'm doing on any <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, we did have a comment from P. Ban Planting that their favorite plant is Monstera, which, like, I don't know what is happening with Monstera right now, but it is blowing up. Like, I see it all over the Internet. There's, like, all kinds of stuff with prints of Monstera leaves. And, yeah, so maybe... Um, we can talk about that one. I don't know. Do you have any comments about that plant? In there particular? Is, they're gorgeous. And I think it's because it's an elegant plant. It's simple and elegant. And the fenestrations, those those holes that the leaves make, are literally wow. astounding. And I think they speak to the child in the A curious person in us. Like, oh my God, this plant is doing something I've never seen before. And, and because usually we associate, like, you see a hole in the plant, it's an insect, the cat done did something, you know, your child done cut and something, trying to do something, but the plant just does it all on its own. And I think it's just that that's part one of it. And as these plants are becoming more easily accessible at the Aldi's and the Lidl's and the, the Walmart's, and pretty much, you know, any plants that you can buy from anybody except from Coastal Farms, it, it just touches me that... Um, Again, these people are, are using these as their starter plants. Them, pothos, the purple queen, or as some people call it, wandering dude, snake plants are all just becoming um, fantastical. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Yes, just don't eat them, please. No, do not. I've, I heard the fruit is edible, right? Is that what it is? I've always wondered why, and I probably should know this already, but... Um, you know how it is. It's like you wonder something about a plant mm -hmm. and then you never go. It's like at an inconvenient time and you never go back and research it. Unless you're Mark Williams of Plants and Healers International, who always has a notebook in his pocket and writes down every plant question and always goes back and researches it. That oh, Mark, something. I swear, he came <laughs> and he gave me like I, 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 a two-inch binder worth of papers. And oh. I have tried to desperately, it was only like 10, 12 sheets, I'm, I'm being exaggerated, but I've tried desperately <laughs> to keep all those pieces of paper together because I'm like, yeah, I'm better with like PDFs, bro. I lose bits of paper. I have enough paper to build a fort and <laughs> a <laughs> in a mansion. I'm trying I to But, um, I, we have another question here too. We do. Yes, From, it's growing. Yeah. Uh, I'm. They say I'm hearing all the good things about chive blossom vinegar, but I grow garlic chives, Chinese chives. Any thoughts on making chive blossom vinegar with those blossoms and a vinegar-based suggestion? I don't know that plant. Do you know that plant? I've seen chives, both garlic and the typical onion chives. Um, I have never made a, I hope you're still here simply, I have never made a vinegar with them. I can say I have made a garlic vinegar, a garlic extraction. I used white vinegar for that as my base. Mm -hmm. Um, and that I used actually as a bug spray because I had a friend who was older who lived mm -hmm. in the place. That was just full of forward flies, humpback flies, you need the name, um, Asian wasp, Asian needle ants, and various other things that were just trying to take over her and, and messing with her cat. So I would often use the, gar the garlic vinegar as a uh, 
thing to help me with my asthma because garlic oh. and onion family are able to open up your chest. So I would try to like have it much to my ex's concern back then. Um, <laughs> open in the room. I love garlic. I'm not going to lie. Anybody that knows me knows Derek Haynes loves a couple of things and garlic is on that top list. But um, yeah, and I use it for that. I would say use a white vinegar for that. If you are doing some type of cooking with it or you're going to maybe do something with it, maybe try an apple cider vinegar or both. Experimentation can be the key. Um, sometimes as black in the garden, when you pay my buddy Cola, you call Auntie Goo and you say, hey, you know, what do you think about this? And take what she says with a grain of salt because there's so much information out there. And sometimes you got to just kind of try things out and be careful, especially when you're trying to do anything medicinal. So that is what I would say. If you're going to use those possible, definitely use them. I would say, you know, if you're trying to do anything medicinal or traction wise, a white vinegar is possibly the best place to go. Or a, again, an apple cider vinegar. And especially if you have a pressure cooker, there's a modified way you can do a quick extraction with a pressure cooker. Cool. Yeah, I've been practicing with um, hemp, getting, making butters and stuff with my insignia pressure cooker. Instapot, I should say. I said pressure cooker. I mean, yeah. Instapot. It's like this Instapot knockoff. I wish I had the yogurt mode because it'd make things easier, but I still make it work. So, yay. 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 Yeah, and um, I use apple cider vinegar for pretty much all of my extraction purposes. I have in the past <laughs> used kombucha that went a little too far. Yeah. And game vinegar. Yeah. Um, more for like cleaning purposes um, and extracting things like pine needles and thyme into that. And that was pretty nice. But for ingestion, I do mostly uh, mostly apple cider vinegar. But I know there's all kinds of fancy vinegars. And I've actually been wanting to explore more making my own vinegars. Um, I've tried a little bit with apples, but oftentimes it doesn't. Um, the pH is too high. So it's too alkaline and not acidic enough. But... I know that some people say add sugar or add um, things with tannins in them, like oak leaves or grape leaves. I don't know. Have you experimented with that at all? I haven't. I have kombucha that turned into vinegar, and I use those to make bitters. But I haven't. Um, I haven't done anything more than that. And I do see your question, Lane Herbs. We're definitely going to come to that. But um, yeah, I haven't done any more than that. Um, I've. I've never really made, so things I typically make or I use extractions, of course, like the white vinegar extractions I use is for like cleaning products. So like or a bath thing or a uh, shower thing, I've made orange extractions to clean like paint off of my hands. So when I spray paint pots and some of you have seen me. Oh, nice. You've seen me spray paint pots, made an orange cleaner so I could wipe the paint off my hands. And granted, I could easily go and take less time and buy a box of gloves but I wouldn't be the crazy if I did. So I've used it for that. It'll just get different like, chemicals off. Basically, if you are a crazy body and you were in a relationship and <laughs> you have to find a way to clean up everything before they get home. And <laughs> yes. Things in order to cover up the fact that I was scrubbing the coat off of Magnolia seed. Now part of the carpet is just a little red. And it's like a little smear that nobody would ever notice. But they have people that are going to see everything. So I've learned how to clean up. This is where I say, if I ever decided to become like a mass murderer, I could get away with it. And they would never trace it back to me. But I digress. I have. I digress. I do. I do. So that's, that's where I've been. And the vinegars out of my kombuchas. I want to get deeper into that. I've also made like an alcohol out of these sodas I've made. They eventually become alcohol. And um, it's it's something that I want to try see if I can maybe clarify it or something to use that for extraction versus going out and buying vodka and stuff because I'm never in the ABC store. Yeah, you hear that. Um, so maybe... Uh, that was hilarious, but yes, and I totally agree about being in relationships with people and having to learn how to clean stuff up. Right now, I mean, I just like, 
I'm so grateful for my daughter because she doesn't give me too much crap that I always have like something, usually at least like five things brewing on the countertop. And we have a very small countertop. So it's usually like multiple different tinctures infusing and John at various stages. <laughs> like who knows what else? So um but yeah, uh, Lane Herbals, can you clarify what you're asking about Instapot? Did you want to know what an Instapot is or how? I think you're asking how Derek infuses in the Instapot. It's a secret you'll never know. Okay, <laughs> here's what happens. So, because I can't just give all everybody all of my stuff. Why do y'all no. want all of my secrets? All of my stuff? You want my social too? Um, we'll find out in Derek's class, which will be fifty to five hundred dollars next week. <laughs> sliding scale. It's all. It's going to be a sliding, a big sliding scale. But all that slides right into my pocket. Amen. <laughs> we are. Um, so when you are using an Instapot, a um, pressure cooker, or any of those things, you kind of have to think about it like this. So. Typically, when you're doing an extraction like a tea, when you're making tea, you're making an extraction, you're making a hot water extraction, warm water extraction of some components of herbs, right? When you are um, doing cooking in a slow cooker and you put all your seasonings in and you're putting your roast in or whatever, it's a similar process. So the slow cooker I have, which I could use, I just don't feel like paying down could would actually be a better thing for me because it would be a lower, more consistent heat. But I want something quick because Derek doesn't always have the patience. So I go and get a mason jar. And again, if I didn't, if this phone was like completely charged, I get up and show you. But I go and get a mason jar. And essentially, I um, get a mason jar and the lids that came. Important to use the metal lids because I. You're going to put it into a pressure cooker or an Instapot and go from there. I try to use the heat setting possible because I'm not trying to denature or kill the or the chemical components of this plant that I'm trying to pull out. Additionally, I have to sometimes low-key do a little research to see like what I'm pulling out, if it's going to come out in whatever solution it is, whether it's in a tea, a water form, whether it's a butter, making an herb used butter, which I've recently found out a way to kind of make a super CBD infused drink. Um, or if I'm again using uh, something else, which is like an alcohol, I put the lid on basically tight and then I unscrew it a couple of times not, or just once. It's just once for me because I got big hands, but I unscrew it just once so it can be loose. And um, I basically fill up my jar, you know, before I, I screw it on. I fill up my jar with whatever. So, so for an example, I had a certain flower that is very popular in been using it for years. And, and it grows wild in India. You know, even They just jump off the bus. They take this flower, you see, and they make almost like a paper mache. And they roll it in this paper mache, very particular. And... Um, it, and then they put it together and they light it a flame and they, they just take it into themselves, this certain herb. Um, but I had some flour that I got from a local store and well, it was definitely legal. And I um, basically put a certain amount in. I didn't measure it out. I was just, you know, experimenting in with some butter I had. So butter, a lot of this flour. And uh, I think I added like a little bit of Irish butter just to kind of round the flavor out. I put it on the soup mode because, again, this in this is one of these Insignia Instapots. So it doesn't have a yogurt mode or temperature. But I figured soup would be the lowest temperature I can go. And um, I basically let it pressurize for like five minutes. And afterwards, it has a cool down setting, basically keep your food or whatever's in there warm for 12 hours. So I try to time this where, you know, um, but do you have a recommended low setting on the machine? I get it. Yeah. So I, um, I did that and I usually try to time it out where like, I'm going to start it 
and then it'll be in the warmer setting. You know, if I start at nine o'clock at night, it'll be done at nine o'clock morning. If I do it on a Friday night to a Saturday morning, I'm still here. If it's during the day, it'll still be warm enough and tempered enough to kind of just sit there. So like the butter, for example, I think I left that in. I got it at six o'clock that afternoon. So it's just been sitting there, shook it up, strained it out, squeezed all of the stuff out through cheesecloth. A, um, a, I'm sorry, not cheesecloth. Flower cloth sacks is what I used. And bingo bongo, Bob's your uncle. I had my extract and I made some food and then passed out because it, it ended up knocking me out. So you can definitely do warm water baths, but this machine doesn't tell me, and this is why I don't like this insignia machine. This machine doesn't tell me which one of the features of any of these things. So I've just had to guess. But if you have in a real Instapot, I feel like they, from what I've read, tell you like, okay, this is this is that temperature and with some recipes you can find again with asking on to google they say use the yogurt setting and that yogurt set will set you up for success and eventually i do want to invest in getting those real instapots because um, i want to make black garlic which is a fermented garlic nice and so easier to do that in the air than a crock pot from what i've read Gotcha. That's cool. With that machine, do you have to put something under the jar like you do in a crock pot so it doesn't sit right on the heat? So with this machine, I missed that part because, you know, like, I why my grandmother doesn't tell me everything because she'd be forgetting. I'd forget too. So with this Instapot, you fill it up to a certain level with water. I basically usually fill my jars like halfway. Basically enough where they can sit in water because they're pressurizing and it needs a liquid. And, um, Enough for it to not slide around or float around. I don't want it just to bubble around. I just want to be able to kind of sit in that water, even a fourth of the way. Um, and again, if I'm doing this real quick, like making a tea or something real quick, or I'm just making a quick extraction, I do it the 10 minutes, I'll quickly depressurize, I'll cool it off, and then go from there. But um, awesome. yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a cool little machine. I just wish I, if I knew what I knew now, back when I first got it, I would have gotten just an original Instapot because I really thought this had a yogurt setting and it doesn't, and it's depressing. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for sharing that. That's like so much great information. It, it's all about played experimentation. That's how we learn. That's for sure. Yeah, I haven't. I have not invested yet in an Instapot, but people keep telling me how great they are. And I saw a crock pot, so I do use that for some mm -hmm. infusing some things. Uh, and you can use either one for making salves and oils and things. Mm -hmm. So that's an option. Um, I infuse my Usnia tincture that way. So, like, Usnia is a lichen, also called yeah. weird. Super fantastic for the respiratory system and UTIs and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a little different because it's a lichen. So it's got different uh, phytochemicals and constituents in it. And so some people I know will hot infuse it, um, putting the alcohol in the jar, putting the jar in the crock pot, and then filling it with water, putting it on a little bit of a towel so it doesn't sit right on the heat, mm. and then um, doing it that way for, I think on low for like 12 or more hours. So that's that's a cool way to do it where you don't have to be watching it the whole time. The most deaf, and with an Instapot, you know, it's a beautiful thing um, because again, you know, you can pretty much, even with this one, and I talk bad about it, but even with this one, you can basically program it, set it, and you can say, okay, I want you to start, like, even if I put the butter in there or whatever, I can say, okay, I want you to start in, like, 10 hours. So I can program it as a delay, and that way, again, things can be pretty much wrapping up whenever I get home or, or you know, it'll just sit and wait for me. Um and it, it's a great thing. I have two crop pots. One that's a, definitely an older one, and the other one um, is still older but more recent. And um, I can do stuff there. I think I've tried a little bit, but yeah, it just was never me. But now, this Instapot is again where it's at because I can just do something. 
depressurized, and I feel like that kind of helps to push things out yeah. and pretty much amplify whatever I'm using. So, like, lip peels or whatever, everything is just destroyed. So, I'm like, everything is out. So I've been experimenting with flavor and um, stuff that way. And again, with that herb I mentioned, I use a part of people that joined with that herb I mentioned, I use it's hemp. I, um, some of y'all may not have guessed it, it was hemp. It's hemp. But I used that. And when I was making a hemp, like a, tr a tea out of the trim that I had from my friends at uh, Oak City Hemp, North Carolina, I ended up like depressurizing it quick just to kind of see what would happen. And the whole house just smelled like hemp. It was just like this whole steam and the whole house was overtaken with the smell. And it was like, oh, okay, I see what's happening here. Like I got to. You know, this is a very earthy tone. I don't mind here, but this is definitely something I would, you know, have to keep in mind if I was doing other stuff that was more offensive. Yes. <laughs> definitely. I know. I, I had something like that going on at my house the other day. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Explain it to people. So. Yes. That, that smells the way you think it is. <laughs> It is, it exactly. But, it, it, but it is, so kind of. Yeah, but anyway, super good question, Lane Herbals. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question about plants, herbs, growing plants, foraging, wild crafting, wild crafted sodas? Life, suit, locks, um, um, being the Wanda School, her starting her nonprofit. What, what do you have to talk to us about on today? What do I have to talk about? No. Well, you, well, you or the, the audience, either or. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if anybody has any questions. Any questions? Plant questions or questions? You have to talk about uh, Oh. I could tell y'all what I foraged today. Yeah. That was pretty good. I foraged some blackberry leaves, and I found out from my amazing teacher, Leslie Williams, the ordinary herbalist, that's a good handle, yeah. um, that blackberry leaves actually supposedly work better as a uterine tonic than raspberry leaves. Crazy. <laughs> So, might not help you as much, Derek. <laughs> you know, I mean, I have, I know people, so this might be something where, you know, five years down the line, somebody's like, I got this UTI. Derek, please help me. I'm going to use these raspberry leaves. And I'm like, you stop that. Put them, I smack them out their hand. And I push them back and they, they hit the wall like this. And I say, hey, you, get some blackberry leaves now. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure for UTI specifically, but for like uterine toning during pregnancy. Uterine toning, I misunderstood. You yeah, want to get your uterine. Yeah, uterine. Sorry to clarify. You're getting your uterus to lift, I see. Your, do you, your <laughs> uterus even lift, bro? Yes, you could get that done. There you go. Yeah. So during pregnancy to tell the uterus for childbirth, um, I think it's usually in the second trimester that it's recommended, especially. Mm -hmm. And um, but also for menstrual and premenstrual symptoms. Oh, my God. I can say this because I have personal experience. I did this for a month mm -hmm. and drank the tea every day for a month of blackberry leaves that were growing right outside my door. So it's super handy because we have like a lot here, at least a lot of wild blackberry and then just harvest like one of those leaves, right? Cause it's a compound leaf and uh, one of those leaves with three to five leaflets and just crushed up a little bit, put it in a French press, pour some hot water over it and drink it up. It's amazing. You can pour other you know, put other good herbs in there as well. Really, really helps with cramping. So if y'all have that issue, it can be really helpful. And then two, blackberry leaf and root are amazing for stopping diarrhea, which could be super important, especially in certain situations like yes. so um good 
good to know. I think maybe we had, oh, no, just comments. No questions. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, if y'all want to ask more questions. Oh, so, yeah, I foraged carefully blackberry leaves because they were very prickly. And um, they are, if you're, it like, it's kind of cool, though, because my friend who was with me said that it brings awareness to what you're doing and to the plant because you're trying not to get pricked with the thorns. Ah, so, yes. yeah, I thought that was super cool. Um, but, yeah, I also learned from Leslie Williams that you can take those leaves and put them on a cutting board and then take, like, um, a rolling pin or a hammer and just, like, beat them a little bit or roll them a little bit, and it will break up those cell walls. And then you can leave them out to ferment a little bit, just like you do with tea leaves. And then once you dry them, it will taste like black tea, but it won't have the caffeine. I thought that was so really? cool. I'm yeah. going to have to try that. I think I know where I can get some blackberry leaves. Because I have friends of mine who are women, and they go through this, this terrible thing every month. These beautiful problems is what we call them. And... It is just so horrendous. It is. I'm grateful I'm not nobody's woman, but it is horrendous. So that is something else. I'm definitely going to keep that in mind. Let me put this grow light on so I can still be seen here. Yeah. Um, the other plant that I forged today, uh-oh, Eric disappeared. Well, hopefully he'll come back. But, uh, the other thing, oh, Maine Herbals, you're in Ontario. Oh, and you have wild black raspberries. Yes, we do too. So, yeah, y'all, that's the other thing, right? Um, any plant in that family, but especially the berries and the roses, because it's in the rose family. So, um, blackberries, raspberries, black raspberries, wine berries, you have thimble berries, things like that. Dewberries, we have those here too. But also roses. So multiflora rose we have here. It's an invasive plant. And I love making things out of invasive plants because we can harvest in abundance and it's not going to hurt anything in the habitat. Um, so it might be, I get the feeling that it's a little milder than raspberry. So you might want to um, put a little bit extra into your tea. But you could try that. Uh, the other thing I poured today was self heal. So Prunella vulgaris, uh, also called heal all, because back in the day they thought it was a panacea and that it was good for all kinds of things. So um, it is an antiviral herb, and um, it's great for the skin. I throw it into salves. Um, so many, many things. And I see that we have more questions here. So sorry, I missed those. Um, I'm hoping that Derek comes back, but maybe his battery died. And um, one of them was, do you have any tips for the corn plant? Can you be more specific, P-Ben, planting what you're asking there? And um, Derek will be great to ask that question. So hopefully he'll come back. What's the hardest plant to deal with? Uh, the plant, Pappy, I, what are you asking, like, deal with how? That's my question. So, um, I, like, are you talking about growing or foraging or processing? That's a lot of, a lot of different things that could be. But um, the hardest plant to deal with. For me, I'm trying to think. I mean, things with thorns, obviously, when I'm foraging. So blackberries and roses. Um, I do harvest the rose hips of multiflora rose, which is super awesome because if you didn't know, the hips of the rose are actually the fruit. So when you're harvesting them, they have the seeds in there, and you're preventing invasives from spreading. So that's pretty great. Um, they have vitamin C and vitamin E in them, but multiflora rose hips are teeny tiny. And uh, so you get a lot of bricks that way. But you can wear some thick gloves, wear a raincoat, and then you won't get bricked as much. Um, Lizzie Louise is asking, I have an elderberry bush. What's a good way to use the berries? Okay, this is a perfect question for me. Thank you. I love elderberries 
Possibly my most favorite plant. Um, so, one, um, supposedly the red ones are poisonous, so probably don't do anything with those, but the ones that you have um, are probably not those, but as long as they're like bluish or blackish, you're good, kind of purpley. And um, so I love making elderberry syrup. That's my favorite thing. I have a simple recipe in my book, the Herbal Handbook for Homesteaders. If you're going to buy it, please, please buy it off my website, thewanderschool.com, so you can support a local author. I get way, way, way more of um, the sale than if you buy it off of some big uh, unnamed <laughs> website. So, um, but, yeah, I just make a syrup out of it pretty simply. And um, it's an antiviral herb, and that's actually been proven. There's been some research that's been done by some Israelis. And so it's great. It's got tons of vitamin C, and it supposedly actually prevents the flu virus from entering your cells. It's amazing. So elderberries are awesome. Um, you just need to know that the whole plant is actually poisonous except for the flowers, including the raw berries. So you always want to cook those berries. Um, Lizzie Louise says this is its first year in my garden, so there's not a ton of berries. I love elderberry syrup. I've only bought it. It's so easy to make, and um, it is very expensive to buy. It's very cheap to make, so please make your own. And, um, yeah, the first year, you definitely won't have a ton of berries. However, a little tip and trick, you can get some bird netting and put that over the shrub. And then um, you will prevent the birds from eating the berries so that you'll actually get them because in one day, they can just fully disappear. So I'm not seeing Derek come back, y'all. And we've been here for a while, and I super duper appreciate you. So thanks so much for being here. I'm going to hop off so I can make dinner. I'm going to teach all weekend at the Sassafras School of Appalachian Plant Craft. I am so loving being live with y'all. So I think that Plant People Talks is going to become a regular thing. So let me know who you want to see me talk to. Send me a message. Um, if you missed part of this, I will post it on my Instagram at The Wander School. And um, please check out Derek Haynes at botanical.highlander he's also the crazy botanist on facebook and um what else i don't know lots of good ongoing botanical education at patreon.com slash the wander school and please if you haven't already listened check out the podcast episode with Derek that we just recorded together all about uh the impact of plants on Black people and Black people's impact on the plants. Wander, Forage, and Wildcraft is the name of the podcast. You can find it on lots of podcast platforms and on the wanderschool.com under the podcast tab. So thanks again for being here. Big love to all of you. Please go outside. Please teach what you learned today and share it. And please. Take good care of yourselves and stay healthy. Good night.